Hi there! Welcome back to another Voltage Modular tutorial, and in this video we're going to be exploring the humble but useful Attenuverter module, as well as three different ways you can utilize it in your cabinet today. Before we begin, let's start off by answering the big question, what is an attenuverter? An attenuverter is a pretty straightforward device. It allows us to attenuate and invert things, as the name would imply. And in simpler terms, this means we can turn things down and we can flip them around. This might sound a little bit basic, but it does open up some exciting new possibilities for your patches, as well as allow you to get more fine control over your cabinet as a whole. To kick things off today, let's take a look at an attenuverter through an oscilloscope, because it's a very easy device to demonstrate, and it should help give you a better idea of what exactly this module does. Here we've got a very simple patch. We have the LFO and that's feeding into the oscilloscope here in input A. I'm going to run this LFO through the attenuverter here and that's going to go to input B which will draw a yellow line rather than this blue line. So the first part of the name attenuator, what does that mean? That means it attenuates or turns things down. If we turn this knob down, you'll see that this yellow line turns down in amplitude so we're decreasing the amount of CV. The second part of the name inverter means we're going to take that yellow line and flip it around. If we hit this negative button here, that inverts that waveform, and there we go. That's the attenuverter. The attenuverter module in Voltage Modular offers three different attenuverters in one single module, so it's actually pretty useful so you don't have to add too many of them to your cabinet. With that out of the way, let's move on to three different ways you can utilize an attenuverter in your patches. If you'd like to download the patches in this video, you can find them with the link down in the description below to explore with them, expand on them, or use them however you'd like. Let's take a listen to this first patch here and then break down how I'm using the attenuverter in it. This top section here is just the patch itself, and all this is is two oscillators that are tuned to fit the part with some extra glide and some delay. There's two different filters happening. I have a low pass filter and a notch filter. What the attenuverter here is doing is two different things. One, it's inverting the modulation so I can send this same LFO to the second filter, but I'm also creating a multi-phase LFO by utilizing a delay with the attenuverter. Let's speed this LFO up here just so we can see the waveform a little bit better, and you'll see that these two sine waves are actually slightly out of phase. This is the power of the delay in combination with the attenuverter here. I've inverted this signal, and you could control the amplitude if you want, I just left it all the way up, but by using a delay here with no feedback and 100% wet mix, we can use the time control to offset the LFO and create a different phase relationship, and we could invert it just to make the modulation even more different if we wanted to. You could also use this to just change the patch every once in a while by inverting the modulation whenever you feel like it. You can further expand on this idea really easily by adding more delays, and then using just a single LFO you could create a very complex multi-phase LFO effect, and then by feeding this into the attenuverter you could invert it or dial back the amount of modulation, creating a very complex LFO with a lot of modulation destinations and a lot of different modulations really easily. The next example here is just a quick little kick drum patch, and it's pretty straightforward. What I wanted to demonstrate here with the attenuverter is it's not only useful for inverting things, but just using it to control the amount of modulation that's being sent to a destination. If we take a look at the patch here, the oscillator is actually receiving the pitch CV from this envelope generator, which is being fed by the gate. If I didn't have the attenuverter here, which we can demonstrate by just leaving this at 100%, you'll hear that this patch sounds a little bit weird. It doesn't sound so much like a kick drum as it does kind of a sci-fi laser zap. So by using the attenuverter, I can dial back the amount of CV that's being fed to the pitch CV in and get more of a thumpy kick drum pitch envelope. Technically speaking, we could have just used the frequency mod input here because this actually offers an attenuverter because we can go positive or negative. However, I think we'll let it slide because this is a tutorial and this is more just to illustrate a concept than anything. In this final example here, I wanted to show how we can use the attenuverter for some more fine control over a patch as well as kind of a performance tool because we can use it to add modulation, take it away, or change the depth of the modulation. If we take a look at this patch here, the filter is receiving the 1 volt per octave signal which is coming from the pitch CV here. This is feeding into the attenuverter on number 2. Now if I have this at 100%, this means that the filter is going to key track 100%. <laughs> Now let's say we wanted to key track the filter, but maybe not key track it 100%. We just want to add a little bit of key tracking to get a little bit of filter movement, not necessarily everything in the kitchen sink. With the attenuverter here, we can just dial back the amount of CV that's going out that's being fed into the 1 volt per octave input. Therefore, we're getting less pitch tracking, but we're still getting some. <laughs> Now 
Now, let's talk about using the attenuverter as a performance control here. If we take another look at this patch, you'll see that this first lane is being used with this LFO. I've got a sample and hold LFO feeding to the input here, I've got this dialed back to minus infinity, and then the output of that is going into frequency mod 2 here. Once again, technically speaking, we could have just used the frequency mod control here because this is an attenuverter, but again, this is just to illustrate the concept. Let's give this patch a play and then start dialing up the attenuverter and you'll start to hear the LFO come in. Another great thing about the attenuverter is it allows you to add just little bits of fine control and really dial things in. If you wanted maybe a small fraction of the range of modulation available, you could use an attenuverter to dial this in. If we turn this control up to 100% here, and let's say we set frequency mod 2 to something really, really small, like 3%. Now let's say even that is just too much. What we can do is use the attenuverter to fine tune that and get a percentage of that percentage. So now we're only going down to, let's say, 6.4% of 3. Point whatever it was percent and I'm not that great at math but that's a very very small amount and this is a really handy way to add little subtle details to your patches. And I think that wraps everything up for this video and that is three different ways you can utilize the attenuverter module in your patches today. So thanks for watching and for more information on Voltage Modular or to pick it up for yourself you can head over to cherryaudio.com.